Order members, the Speaker has received notice from the Minister of Finance that he wishes to make a statement. Minister. Uh, I wish to update the House on the latest set of allocations aimed at addressing the evolving COVID-19 situation and the need for economic recovery. Since my statement to the Assembly on June, monitoring further funding of $762.2 million has been made available to the Executive from Treasury. Funding has also become available as a result of revised assessments of earlier COVID-19 allocations. The Department for Communities has surrendered $4 million of funding in relation to its COVID-19 Supporting People programme response due to the use of existing funding to provide this support and lower than anticipated PPE costs. The Executive had previously held $2.2 million for its contribution to a ferry operator scheme run by the Department of Transport in England. Latest indications are that the cost will be $0.35 million, thereby releasing $1.85 million for reallocation. In addition, as a result of recent departmental assessments, some $30.9 million of capital Dell has been made available for reallocation. Last Concordia, I want to provide an update to the House on allocations made over the summer period. Due to the evolving situation and the need to provide support as expediently as possible, the Executive allocated £123 million of funding on the 13th of August. This set of allocations enabled schools and further education facilities to safely reopen, provided apprenticeship places and supported social enterprises. Two limited allocations were made on the 11th of September, reflecting the urgency of additional higher education places and PPE for the education sector as schools reopened. Last Concordia, following a meeting of the Executive last Thursday, further allocations total, totalling £165.2 million have now been agreed. Given the concerns around waste management and the need to meet pressures uh, resulting from increased landfill and waste management costs, DERA have been allocated £11.4 million to support these key services. Local councils have been at the forefront of vital recovery services, despite experiencing a reduction in their income. Councils will also play a key role in economic recovery and recognition uh, and in recognition of that, £40 million has been allocated to the Department of Communities to support councils. Given the severe impact of COVID on the arts sector and the need to support the reopening of venues, £29 million has been allocated to the Department of Communities for cultural recovery. This is in addition to the £4 million which was previously allocated for the Cultural Resilience Fund and means that the Executive has provided £33 million to support this sector. The Executive recognises the need for further support for businesses and in recognition of the ongoing hardships faced, the Department for Economy has been funded to support a number of initiatives. £8.5 million for assistance to business to encourage new businesses, help retain employees, attract FDI and boost the screen industry and games sector. £8.4 million for skills and youth training to ensure young people can continue learning and employers have access to people with the skills and qualifications needed to recover and grow their businesses. £9.9 .9 million for tourism to support tour operators, promote the North as a tourism destination and assist businesses to adapt to changed market conditions. £5.8 million for university R&D to replace, protect jobs, help universities focus on the research needed to fight the outbreak and support economic recovery. £1.9 million for air route support to develop air routes that are critical to the economic development and £1.4 million for energy. And this funding will implement a demonstrator project to kickstart the hydrogen economy. These allocations should all help spur economic recovery. The Executive has allocated £8 million to maintain a safe environment for schools through to March 2021, with a further £1 million to help preschools meet the additional costs of reopening. Young people's education has been affected by COVID-19 and an allocation of £0.2 million has been made to support children with additional and special educational needs. £1.6 million has been allocated to the Department of Health in relation to the Track, Trace and Protect app. The mobile app was launched on the 30th of July to support PHA contact tracing programme and will help minimise the spread of COVID-19. Given the winter pressures identified by the Department for Infrastructure and the need to ensure that key transport corridors are accessible during the winter months, the Executive has allocated £5 million for road service to provide vital gritting and gully cleaning services. The £14.8 million capital allocated to the A6 demonstrates the Executive's commitment to delivering this vital dual carriageway between Belfast and Derry. This allocation will ensure that delays in construction caused by the COVID-19 lockdown earlier in the year will now be made good. Members will also be aware of the limitations to development being caused by many areas of historical underinvestment in our wastewater infrastructure. A £15 million capital allocation to Northern Ireland Water will provide investment to upgrade sewers, wastewater treatment works and pumping stations. 
Full details of all allocations to dogs are set out in the tables that accompany this statement. Last Concorda, following the latest round of allocations, the Executive retained a central fund of £55.2 million to be held for further sectoral support, including airports, travel agents and a scheme developed by the Department of Infrastructure targeting taxi and coach sectors. Six million, uh, £600 million uh, pounds also continues to be held centrally, pending the Department of Health's assessment of costs for 2020-21. Further decisions on funding will be made following the Department of Health assessment of need and proposals from departments on further sectoral support. The Executive continues to respond to the changing environment that COVID-19 brings, and the allocations I have set out today will contribute to our aims of supporting businesses, protecting the vulnerable, and ensuring the continuation of key public services. I commend this statement to the House. I call the Chairperson of the Finance Committee, Steve Aiken. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Mr Deputy Speaker, and may I thank the Minister for his statement and indeed for meeting with me earlier today, and thank you very much indeed for keeping me informed of the information so far. I think, as, as an Assembly, we can all welcome the £2.2 billion we have received from the rest of our nation, and indeed it underlines the benefits of being part of our precious union. I expect a bit more than that. <laughs> here, here, here. Right. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> But, uh, Minister, I'm so pleased to see the particular the allocations and resources. However, one of the things that noting the statement is, and I don't believe this is a criticism of the Finance Department, but there's issues particularly around the excluded, issues for taxi drivers, for the haulage industry, and for details on the kickstart scheme. And maybe the Minister could allude to whether he's received any bids from the Department of the Economy or indeed the Department of Infrastructure for these things that have had at least six months in their gestation to try and get forward to this point as well. I would also like, I note of course that we've got £55 million in reserve, but I also note indeed as my honourable friend from South Belfast continuously talked about, the issue of £2.2 million in APD that we still keep on giving back to the Treasury, in the fact that some of our airports are, need vital resource to keep going for a period of time, in particular to keep going with 24-hour operations at Belfast International Airport. And there is a real need for financial support to be able to do that, particularly when of the importance it has to do with our freight issues to be able to do that as well. And I also note that there is a, uh, and again, we as the Ulster Unionists, uh, as myself as Chair of the Finance Committee and also as my position as Chair of the Ulster, or, or sorry, as Leader of the Ulster Unionist Party, we welcome the uh, additional money for the A6, and we also welcome the additional money for Northern Ireland Water. But uh, the issue is, bearing in mind that this money has to be spent come this question? By, by the spent, but this money needs to be spent by the end of the fin financial year. Can the finance minister brief us, and could he explain to us how this money is going to be actually spent by the end of this financial year period? Bearing in mind the difficulties of writing contracts and getting suitable business cases put forward. Thank you. Uh, well, I thank the, the committee chair for his uh, for his questions and uh, his, his commentary in, in relation to the statement and the allocations to date. It, it has been frustrating that uh, it has taken some period of time that certain sectors who were left out to try and find, uh, if you like, a, a solution between departments. But, uh, a number of these sectors fell, if you like, in terms of responsibility between departments, and it has taken some time. Uh, and I think an intervention from the first and deputy first minister to try and get uh, departments to to. Uh, uh, and some additional support and power being given to some of the departments to make sure that they could uh, could deal with this issue. So, uh, in relation to the coaches and taxis, uh, that work has been done. I haven't yet received a bid, uh, but I, I, as, as he has quite rightly identified, we have held aside £55 million to allow that uh, and a number of other uh, perhaps bids involved in different sectors, and we, we know they're going to be for their airport costs as well, so to try and cover those things. And, of course, that, as with all of the COVID money, he's correctly identified, has to be spent within the financial year. So we need to make sure that that, those, that work is done quickly uh, and those costings are brought forward uh, as quickly as we can. So the executive can, uh, if it supports uh, whatever bid is made, bring forward further allocations. Uh, I, I, I get the point and others have raised in relation to APD. The economy department still feels it's an important tool uh, in order to try and, and support connectivity or con connectivity. If they change their view in relation to that, I'll quite happily uh, consider uh, that in the future. Uh, and in relation to Northern Ireland Water, uh, my understanding is it's obviously a matter for the Department of Infrastructure uh, to ensure that it's spent, but there's somewhere in the region of 11 schemes 
that NIW have identified that they want to get on with. So uh, they know, departments know when they bid for this, and we've had long conversations with them. This is COVID money. It has to be spent within this financial year. Uh, and so those who are bidding for capital know the constraints in relation to that. And I uh, assume that they have made those bids in the full expectation that they could spend the money in the time available. As members will be aware, some discretion is shown to committee chairs in uh, asking a question. So we'd ask all members to have a brief introduction and then come to their question. I call Paul Free. Thank you very, very much, Mr. Speaker. And uh, again, can I welcome here and now and put it on record the, the funding towards the energy and the hydrogen economy project? Because I believe that will help and assist not only in the recovery but also in the in the coming years with regards to the climate emergency and the. The, the recovery of industry, uh, both in my constituency and wider afield in Northern Ireland. But is it not frustration, uh, Minister, being outlined today, when we do have a large pot of money, £55 million pounds worth, sitting at the centre that could be used to help alleviate the pain and suffering of some of our industries that have carried on throughout this COVID emergency, not least the haulage company and the taxi and coach sectors, who have been penalised further by the Infrastructure Minister with regards to her slowness on MOTs, PSVs and licence requirements for drivers? Well, I, I, I mean, I can't answer for the Infrastructure Minister in relation to those other matters, and uh, I'm sure those are issues that you'll raise directly with her. I do know that there was... Uh, there was an issue between the economy department and the infrastructure department in relation to supporting those sectors that you have outlined. Uh, and it was quite clear that the, for infrastructure to accept that, they needed to have some additional powers conferred on them. So it wasn't just a straightforward uh, who, who wants to take this case and who's going to run with it. Uh, so it did take some time to resolve that. That is frustrating, particularly if you're a sector that is waiting on support uh, and, and, and in, in very... Uh, very challenging economic times. Uh, and, and so I'm glad that that has been resolved. Uh, and I look forward to uh, an allocation or a, a, a submission being brought along uh, so that the executive can consider an allocation to uh, a number of those sectors. Uh, and in relation to the, the hydrogen scheme that he mentions, yes, uh, of course, there is uh, funding in there to, to have, a, if you like, a, a test project in relation to that. I am due to have a cross-departmental discussion with a number of other ministers in, in, in the near future uh, to, to get further information in relation to that. And I know it's something that uh, people have been advocating very strongly. I call Melissa McHugh. Uh, Minister, have you received bids from any of the groups? And there are many of them, some from my own constituency, who are excluded from previous Order, teams. order. Could I urge members to stand adjacent to a microphone? Is where everyone should be standing to get appropriate distancing so that everyone can hear the record for the record. Thank you. Last question, Charlotte. Uh, Minister Rees, uh, same question again. Have you received bids from uh, any of the groups, and there are many, as I say, within my own constituency, who were excluded from previous schemes and what arrangements have been made to accommodate those people? Yes, I, I, I'm sure we've all been receiving representation uh, from various sectors who, uh, who have, have, for one reason or another, fallen through the gaps in, in relation to that, uh, to the supports that have been... Have been uh, uh, made available to date, uh, and um, we've talked about the coaches and taxis, uh, I know the travel agent sector, newspapers, uh, other sectors have been making cases, self-employed, uh, newly self-employed uh, uh, people have been making a case. There are difficulties with some of those, with some of, particularly in relation to self-employed, would involve the, uh, the assistance or certainly the oversight of HMRC, which may not be available to us. So there have been challenges, uh, some of them because they kind of fall between departments and getting people uh, to uh, accept responsibility for that, but also the challenges in terms of verifying uh, some of the sectors and how you would uh, give support and how we could verify that that support was going correctly to the right people. So there are a number of challenges around all of that, and I, I, I feel very much for those who are continuing to struggle uh, and feel that they have been left out, and I, I know that the executive is keen to try and get support as quickly as they can, and that's why I have kept in reserve a pot of money so we can do that as quickly as possible. I call Matthew Till. Mr. Deputy Speaker, I think it's just worth saying um, up front that I don't think there was any legal doubt over whether it was the Infrastructure Economy Minister's legal via to support certain sectors. 
it was the economy ministers. And on that note, um, Mr Deputy Speaker, um, can I just uh, make the point, I used to in a previous life do improvisational comedy um, uh, when I was much, much younger, but unfortunately there does seem to be a high degree of improvisation around business support. We've got 40 million here allocated to business support, including a 8.5 million, which is just called assistance to business. This seems very whack-a-mole, it seems very improvised. Why hasn't the economy minister worked with the finance minister to produce a joined-up economic recovery plan which explains exactly where this money is going and why it's going to particular places? And further to that, just at the Mem bottom members of the table, order, sorry, just order, the bottom order, of the table, order, there's a... Order, uh, order, I've been flexible with the individual. I'll give him a long introduction. This is an opportunity to ask a question to the minister. Minister. Well, uh, can I say that uh, I mean the, everybody will have their version of, of where the the the, uh, the issues lay between economy and infrastructure in terms of assistance in some sectors, and I, I'm just pleased that it's been resolved. Uh, I, I'm, I'm pleased that infrastructure uh, ha have undertaken to do it, and I look forward to working with the infrastructure minister to try and identify how we get support to those sectors. Can I say in relation to the the the, the I mean, in giving a statement, I guess obviously you have to condense. Or I could speak here for two or three hours, and I'm sure the speaker might take issue with that. Uh, but so the, the 8.5 million for assistance to businesses is to encourage new businesses, help retain employees, attract the FDI, and boost the screen industry in the game sector. Uh, I'm sure the, the member can get much more detail on that from the Department of Economy should he, he choose to engage with them. The, the issue about uh, economic recovery plan, the, the Department of Economy produced its own economic recovery document. The executive produced a, a, a framework uh, for economic recovery against which these allocations were set uh, and that took uh, a little bit of time over the summer to get that together and that's why we waited until that was available to us. So it wasn't a question of myself and the economy minister. These allocations are made by the executive and it's against its own framework. I call Andrew Muir. Thank you very much uh, Mr Deputy Speaker and uh, I thank the Minister for his statement. I am disappointed that there is no inclusion of funds for those who have been excluded from any support nor hauliers. Um, in relation to hauliers, I note the powers that have been passed uh, or meant to be passed to the Infrastructure Minister in relation to that, but I note that hasn't occurred yet. Um, one of the issues of concern is that there has been a significant number of Barnet consequentials coming to Northern Ireland, but yet there still hasn't been, for example, a bid for funding and a scheme rolled out for the Kickstart scheme, even though that was not across in Great Britain uh, back, question? In, back, back in July. What measures has the Minister taken to ensure that the monies are actually spent in this financial year? We're not going to surrender any monies at the end of the financial year. Well, the, the, the member will know that because something comes across as a barn of consequences, it doesn't automatically go to the same issue. It's up to the executive to decide how to use that money. And clearly, the executive, having dealt, uh, uh, ensured that the health system has enough to cope with the pandemic, uh, wanted to turn its mind to economic recovery because the economy has suffered greatly as a consequence of the pandemic and the lockdowns and restrictions associated with it. So it was to try and uh, ensure that we targeted the, the limited resource, and it is a limited resource that we have, uh, to the best effect in terms of economic recovery. Uh, so it, it, uh, the, all of the departments, I say, there is a significant amount of work done uh, between officials at the departments. They're very clear that this COVID allocations are for within this financial year, that money uh, bid for uh, and schemes put forward have to be spent out within this financial year. And we will continue to monitor that. Uh, and as I announced at the start of my statement, there have been a number of surrenders uh, which added to the pot where people were very early on identifying that they couldn't or didn't need the money that had previously been allocated and was returned to us. So we will keep a close eye on departments to make sure that that happens over the next number of weeks and months. I call Pam Cameron. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker, and thank the Minister for his statement to the House today. And given uh, the need to change what, how we operate in a pandemic, and, and in particular uh, with regard to the health service, could I ask uh, the Minister if any of the money is being held centrally, will be ring-fenced uh, for the much-needed health service transformation going forward. Well, as, as I said in the statement, the member will know we, we have uh, £600 million has been left uh, held centrally and the Minister for Health is bringing forward an assessment because, again, it's, COVID money has to be spent in this year. It's a substantial amount of money, although obviously the health service uh, can use a substantial amount of money and, and, and can make use of a substantial amount of money. So he, he is uh, going to bring forward 
uh, some detail on that because we want to be clear, firstly, that there is enough to cope with what is coming at us, and it's quite clear there's going to be another uh, surge in relation to COVID, and that's going to coincide with winter flus to create uh, significant difficulty for our health service to, to cope with that. So we need to make sure it's properly resourced. Uh, and then I think he is looking at recovery. Uh, in terms of the health system itself as well uh, in those costs. So he will bring forward to us an assessment of what he needs and can spend within this financial year. And as I say, £600 million is a lot of money to cover that. Uh, if, if he isn't, doesn't require it all, then that will be put back into the pot and reallocated in other areas. But I, I know recovery and assistance for the health service generally is part of his thinking in terms of spending that money. I call Gemma Dolan. Good last can call you. Um, and I thank the Minister for his statement. Uh, Minister, will you join with me in encouraging Minister Mallon to use some of the £15 million pounds allocated to NI Water for the residents of Gallia Shore and Enniskillen? Well, I'm sure, like probably other members, we have received uh, correspondence and, and from uh, people involved. It, it seems to be an appalling situation uh, and a, a very very strong sympathy for residents there who have found themselves through no fault of their own in a situation where the, the services uh, in terms of sewage and wastewater uh, to their houses have not been finished and, uh, and don't seem to be uh, any route to getting that finished. We have, as, as I said in my statement, allocated uh, £15 million pounds capital uh, in, today, in, in the statement I've announced today for Northern Ireland Water, uh, specifically for schemes. Uh, we recently provided additional funding to Northern Ireland Water, £27 million pounds worth of resource as well. So I'm hoping that the uh, Infrastructure Department can, uh, you know, now that it has sufficient resource, can engage with the residents in, in, in that Gallia Shore uh, scheme and, and see can they find a resolution to what are unacceptable problems for them. I call Paul Given. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Um, can I ask the, the Minister how much to date has been allocated to TransLink? I note in the statement £20 million in this most recent allocation, and it has appeared in every statement so far. So, what is the total that TransLink has been in receipt of? And was there a missed opportunity for TransLink to have availed of additional support through the furlough scheme, which would have allowed executive funding to have went into other schemes? Well, I, I don't have the figures, but as I have dealt with this quite a number of times over the last number of months, I think, and if I need to correct this, I'll come back and correct it, but I think given the additional uh, £20 million pounds that we give TransLink in the budget in March, above uh, and beyond what the Department of Infrastructure had, I think a further £70 million pounds has been allocated over the COVID allocations to TransLink. So my, my uh, guess on that is that about £90 million pounds since March has been, has been given to TransLink. Uh, the question in relation to furlough, uh, I know that the infrastructure minister looked at that, and I give advice in relation because initially people considered furlough was for only for private uh, sector, uh, and we, we then were aware that the public sector could avail of it in certain circumstances. And TransLink uh, were, I think, eligible to avail of uh, sub, so certainly some of the workers there were, uh, and the Department for Infrastructure looked at that, and TransLink obviously looked at it and decided not to go that route. I don't know why. Uh, that's a matter for the minister for infrastructure or the CEO of TransLink uh, to answer. But I think it's in the region of 90 million pounds additionally. Since the start of the financial year. I call Kiva Archibald. Um, Gromelga, last can call you and thank the Minister for his statement. And Minister, the 52.1 million that has been held centrally, um, you've outlined for uh, sectoral supports, including airports, travel agents, and taxis and coach. She says, can you give us an update on the plan financial supports for airports, please? Yes, well, the, the, uh, we have provided some COVID support to some of the airports, uh, those who, who had made a case and needed that. And uh, it, it's, uh, I think business has begun to pick up again, which is good news uh, for our three airports. Uh, and there is a consideration, I think, in terms of security and safety uh, 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 costs to the airports that we, we will uh, attempt to provide some further support in relation to that. Now, obviously, that discussion is going to have to be had with each of the three airports, uh, and we'd see what level uh, of assistance might be required. And we also have to uh, match that against what level of resource we have uh, to give them. But there is the executive has, in the pot of 55 million we held back, agreed that some of that will be allocated towards airports. So we need to have that discussion with them fairly soon to see what is required. I call Pat Catney. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Uh, I thank the Minister uh, for his statement, and I welcome the further allocated support, particularly for our arts sector. Uh, would the Minister agree with me that all signs seem to be pointing towards a further lockdown? That being the case, what planning has his department done in putting support in place 
when this inevitably happens? Well, I, I'm not sure that it's inevitable, and uh, I, I suppose we can all look at, at how things are developing and make our own guess. And that we have not received any advice at the executive uh, that a further lockdown is required. There are restrictions in place, obviously, in, in terms of the home setting, but a further lockdown, which would directly impact on, on, uh, on businesses. So we haven't received that advice. Uh, as I say, there is a pot set aside for a number of interventions. Should there be money left on the other, uh, when those interventions are made, then I, I will be come back to the executive to ask whether they want to reallocate what's left or to keep, uh, in case there, we do get to the type of lockdown scenario he's talking about, some money set, continue to be set aside until into the new year. Uh, bear in mind it has to be spent by the end of the financial year uh, just to see what, what the uh, pandemic might throw at us in the, in the time ahead. But I think, I think it would be prudent to keep some pot of money uh, available for emergency assistance should that be required. I call Mike Nesbitt. Uh, Deputy Speaker, thank you very much. Uh, I want to acknowledge the Minister faces two massive challenges, protecting public services and trying to preserve the fabric of society. And on the latter, I very much welcome the money for the arts now being released. My question today is about sport. The Chief Executive of the IRFU has posed an existential threat to the future of professional rugby on the island, including Ulster. And the all-party group on sport last week heard a common theme from governing bodies. Receipts, gate receipts are drying up. Sponsors are either withdrawing or seeking to renegotiate. Money is very tight. Can the minister uh, give clarity to sport as to where they stand in terms of the executive's priorities, please? Well, I, think, uh, I, mean, I can speak personally I mean, as somebody who's involved with sport and continues to be involved with sport. Uh, I, I, the, the benefit to society generally is just immeasurable. Uh, I, I was fortunate enough to attend a hurling final yesterday in Armagh, uh, and the organisation on a voluntary basis that goes into that uh, to ensure people are safe, that they're socially distanced, that uh, you know, the, the crowds are controlled by, by people who are volunteers who are going out uh, and putting their own health at risk by, by undertaking to do that and, and, and to allow people to get the enjoyment uh, and the value of, of you have from attending a live sports event, which, which for me is, is a huge, huge benefit. And, and the contribution then in terms that makes to society when they're engaging with young people and giving young people direction, support and, and uh, positivity in their lives uh, is huge. So uh, by all means, we're uh, trying to support sport as much as we can, recognised very clearly because of the limitations on crowds and, and bear in mind in this part of the island we're fortunate at least we can get some attendance at games whereas uh, in the southern part we can't uh, but there's a huge challenge for rugby, for Gaelic, for soccer, for all sports uh, and, and I think we have to keep engaging with them to see how best we can help. I, I noticed the, the government in Dublin did, did make some intervention with the GAA in terms of carrying out the All-Ireland Championships, County Championships uh, and, and I'm sure that's very welcome that will apply in the six counties here as well uh, but we have to continue that engagement to sport to see what we can provide to support them because the, as I say the work that sports people do the vast bulk of it voluntarily for us is, is immeasurable in terms of its benefit. I call Karen Mullen. Minister, I also welcome this statement today, in particular the additional funding uh, for the A6 development and your ongoing commitment, commitment to addressing regional inequalities. These allocations were made alongside the announcement of a job support scheme, which is also critical to economic recovery. Minister, what is your initial assessment of this new scheme? Well, uh, there, there was a very clear demand from uh, uh, employers that we spoke to, uh, and we've been articulating that to the Treasury for some months now, that the, the idea of a cliff edge in October to the furlough scheme, as it's sort of more popularly known, uh, was disastrous uh, for, for businesses here, for employers here, and for employees, and would see very large-scale redundancy. So I am pleased that uh, some form of scheme has continued on. However, it is nowhere near as generous, and it will present significant challenges, uh, I think particularly to low-paid and part-time uh, employees, uh, and I think it will present challenges, but nonetheless, I have to say, the idea of a no scheme or, or one which is much reduced in terms of the level of support from the job retention scheme that was uh, previously there, uh, there's a, a vast difference between the two, but uh, I have to say that uh, it is better than none, but it is going to present some significant challenges, and I don't doubt that we will see an increase in redundancies as a consequence of it. I call Kelly Armstrong. Thank you very much, Deputy Speaker, and thank you very much um, to the Minister. I'm delighted to say that there's a kickstart to hydrogen. We actually have the opportunity now of resolving the Northern Ireland waters problems, if, if only we made it 
produce hydrogen, but don't get my geek up on that one. But I wanted to ask the Minister, when you get to this stage in questions, and, and the Deputy Speaker has been very kind, um, all the questions can be asked, but I want to ask you one about joined up working, and this is about yourselves and the Treasury. Is this it? Is this the last of the money that we're going to see this year? Because we know, and it's mentioned in your um, piece about councils, councils are vital to delivering on the ground. Sol has told us the 40 million is what they needed, but that was just to break even. Are, will there be any more money coming from Treasury, or do we need to send out a clear message to say that's it from, from big government, um, the rest has to be brought in with income? Thank you. Well, I have to say that we have no indication that there's anything more coming. Uh, as a matter of fact, when we did receive the significant allocation, particularly for health, which we set aside, we were told very clearly that was the last uh, COVID money from the Treasury. Now, whether that changes will not very much be determined by what goes on here, but more than likely what goes on in England and the southern part of England, uh, whether there's a change to that. Uh, we, we had very clear uh, advice as we, we raised, for instance, in relation to the last question, that furlough scheme, that that, that was it, but now they've come forward with some form of uh, a job retention scheme, albeit uh, much reduced. Uh, so whether we will get further allocations or not, we don't know. Uh, other pressures might come to bear on the government in London and might force them to change their mind. But we have to operate on the basis of what we know we have. Uh, and that's why we're saying to people, apart from the, the money which is set aside for health, uh, which may well all be used by health and the 55 million we've set aside for other sectors, then as far as the executive is concerned, we have no further COVID allocations to make. I call Sinead McLaughlin. Thank you, Minister, for your statement this afternoon to the House. Can I ask the Minister to give me a bit more detail about the 80 million FTC from Ulster or to Ulster University? This comes uh, on top of a switch earlier this year from the FTC to cash uh, uh, allowance. And can I also ask why this is coming from the Executive Office? I uh, thank the member for a question. That, yes, you're right that the FTC for 80 million has been agreed for the Ulster University Belfast campus project. It's not a COVID recovery specific allocation, but a previously planned allocation as part of this project, which needs to be agreed now to allow the project to, require, to uh, access the required funding. And the conditional approval has already been given by the Department for Economy and Department of Finance for the loan to Ulster University in respect of its of Belfast project. And due diligence has been undertaken by Economy in relation to the stability of the project and the capability of the university. The, uh, I know in relation to these matters that the Executive Office had uh, opted in to play a role in trying to the hugely critical project, not just for Belfast, but also by knock-on effect by implication for McGee as well, uh, that the, the University of Ulster are able to complete these very significant capital projects. And so I know the Executive Office uh, have become involved in that to ensure that this project, which has a, a much bigger significance than just Belfast or indeed just the economy department, uh, is delivered and is delivered properly. I call Rachel Woods. Thank you, Speaker, and thank you, Minister, for your statement. These allocations for some will be a plug to a gap, but not for all, as we have still so many excluded. What is missing here, and Mr O'Toole touched on it previously, is funding for a long-term coherent green plan for economic recovery. So can I ask what discussions have been had across the executive and your department on funding this and when we will see it come forward? The process we're dealing with here is COVID allocation uh, money. Uh, uh, and that is money which we've received this year from Treasury, which wouldn't have been in the plans last February, March, when we were setting the budget, or even when we were discussing the idea of uh, a, a revamp programme for government. So this money has come in uh, to us. It has to be allocated within this year. So you're not talking about long-term plans attached to this. You're talking about economic recovery, meeting the challenges of the pandemic, uh, economic recovery in the here and now, trying to assist businesses through this crisis. Uh, that doesn't set aside the fact that the executive will be setting a budget now coming into the autumn, which we'll be going out consulting on and, and, and agree on that budget in early spring, which I'm hoping will be a multi-annual budget if we can get that clarity from Treasury. Uh, and then that, and then the programme for government, which accompanies that, I think that's where the discussion in relation to long-term and green uh, recovery planning and green economy planning uh, should be had. I call Jim Allister. Uh, I'm assuming that all the money announced today isn't COVID money. The capital money, for example, seems to be reallocation of money that has been surrendered. But in terms of the COVID money, can the Minister give us any indication of how far there has been departure under Barnet from the pigeonholes in respect of which it was allocated as to how it has been spent? What is the 
Is there is some picture of the disaggregation? I can, I can get to that detail. I don't have it to hand. I, I, I mean, from my own memory, and from obviously we've made a number over the last six months or so, a number of COVID allocations. They have generally come in, in a fairly broad category. We got a significant amount of money for health, which we're still sitting on until health decides what it needs. Uh, and we have a significant amount of money came across for PPE, which we have used some of it. And, and, uh, and use that to purchase PPE for health and also for other departments. Uh, but I can get you the detail on that. I, I don't see a huge amount of departure. There was broadly speaking economic recovery money, health uh, uh, resilience money, if you like, for the health department. Uh, but I, I can certainly get those, those figures and, and we'll supply them to you. I call Jerry Carl. Thank you, Minister, for her statement. And most of this money will obviously be welcome, uh, but I uh, won't address some of the, the longer term issues refunding and uh, funding and lack of funding for our services. The Minister will obviously be aware uh, Rishi Sunak has indicated his preference for corporation tax to increase by 5%. As a Minister, any views on this? Uh, and if he would like it to increase by 5% or more? And if so, um, how much extra money would that bring in to, um, for public services here? There's been no discussion on corporation tax increase or decrease. As a matter of fact, both myself and the Minister of Economy said it's not something we're considering at this time. I call Claire Sugden. Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker, and thank you, Minister. Um, Minister, forgive me, but um, this statement, aside from its title, doesn't really feel that it's for COVID-related allocations. Indeed, a lot of the allocations you have made could be argued were gaps that existed before the pandemic. Um, will the Minister's department, therefore, be auditing how it is spent, for example, within councils, within the university, so that it does directly relate to the, or the, the difficulties related to COVID-19? Yes, uh, of course we will continue to, to engage. The, the departments put forward bids, and, and obviously in detail, which isn't uh, available in the statement, uh, but certainly in, in question in any of the departments about the money they received, you can, you're more than free to uh, put those questions to them and get that information. The councils have been at the forefront. Uh, of, 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 of assisting and fighting this pandemic, not just in terms of the services they provide, but also how they harness uh, the public, uh, uh, the voluntary spirit that, that is out there in the country and, and assisted in food parcels, things like uh, services like that that I don't think the executive could have uh, been able to deliver itself. And, and, and the council suffered a, a significant loss in income as well uh, as, as many businesses did. So, I mean, they are a critical part of joined up government uh, and we have to ensure that the, the, the bid for councils was, was more than we were able to give. Uh, but I think it was important to give uh, support to councils and I've had engagements with Nilga and with other council representatives as well to hear firsthand the problems they're continuing to have. Uh, and so I think it is important to give council support because I think uh, as, as we head towards what looks like a, another increase uh, and possibly another surge in relation to the virus, the, the role of councils will be critical at that stage too. But we do uh, engage the departments put in detailed bids. They are interrogated. Uh, we ask them to rank the bids in order of importance, uh, and, and they were set against that, that uh, framework recovery uh, document as well to make sure that they, they had a contribution to economic recovery. I call John Stewart. Deputy Speaker, Minister, there's been a great deal of um, responsibility tennis being played by various ministers in terms of who's responsible for providing additional support for businesses that have to date have not been able to avail of support or intervention from the executive. Um, there's a motion passed unanimously in here two weeks ago to that effect. Have you had a budget from the Minister from the Economy in the absence of one? Are you in a position with your executive colleagues to create a package of support for those SMEs that have to date missed out? Uh, no, not as yet. And, uh, I mean, we can debate all day about whose responsibility these things are, and it's been back and forward. But, I mean, to be quite honest, I can only allocate or make a recommendation for allocations is what I do and bring it to the executive on the basis of a bid made from a department. I've been very clear about that. I don't have the, I don't have the, the authority or the responsibility to put together packages of support from the finance department. We assess what's brought to us and then make a recommendation to the executive in terms of the funding uh, available to us. Uh, and so, to be quite honest, I, I'm more interested in people getting on together and, and working on these things and starting to get support out there where it's needed. Uh, we have done that very, very well. Uh, and that's, you know, I'm sure like many other members you engage with, with people in business and other areas, and, and they have greatly appreciated the support, the rates reliefs, all of that support that has been given to uh, the public to, to assist in fighting the pandemic. Uh, but there are sectors who are still understandably uh, annoyed at being left out, and the sooner we can get that put together and get support to them, then the better. <coughs> Members, uh, the next item of business on the order paper 
uh, is question time, which is two o'clock. And I can thank all members for asking questions. All members have been taken. Uh, I therefore propose by leave of the Assembly, uh, with question time com coming up at two o'clock, that we would suspend the sitting briefly until then. The sitting is, by leave, suspended. Thank you.